choosing an LED grow light today is really tough. So we decided to educate you guys. We're going to give you a little tutorial here and show you all the details on how to pick the right light for you. Names in this industry are um, very difficult because typically if you go to pick out a light bulb, say an HPS, um, it's a 600 watt HPS and it'll actually run more watts. So it'll be like 650 watts or 670 watts. In the LED grow light industry, unfortunately it's not like that. Most companies will name their light um, with a much higher number, let's we'll say a K600 and the light will only pull 200 watts. So you might think you're getting a 600 watt light or a 600 watt equivalent and it really has nothing to do with that. So you really need to be careful with names. Don't get caught up in those um, and really focus on the, the running wattage. Um, at Advanced, what's nice is we really try to focus on getting really close to that. So if it's a 350 watt light, we name it a 350. If it's a 100 watt light, we'll name it a 100. Uh, DS100, for example, will pull 93 watts. So we try to get as close to that as we can so that it's not deceptive to, to you. There's a couple different key things that you guys need to understand when it comes to wattage. One is LED watts. Um, a lot of times in this industry what you have is you have people that will take an LED and they'll name it say a 5 watt LED or a 3 watt LED. Just because it's called that doesn't mean it actually is that. Um, there's a lot of 5 watt LEDs on the market that are really only pulling about 2 watts and we really, I mean, they look to be 3 watt LEDs just being overdriven. So you have to disregard LED watts because if I say I'm running a 5 watt LED and I have 100 of them in there and I call it 500 LED watts, well if the light only pulls 150 watts from the wall, you have a 150 watt light. You don't have a 500 watt light. So disregard LED watts and just focus on what the light is actually running from the wall. Now the other thing about LED wattage, just to touch on this while we're here, is you really need to watch out for these high powered chips that are being called that but being driven at such low wattage. Um, so the next thing to cover is watt per foot. Okay, In any horticulture um, space, grow space, when you're using grow lights, you're going to have a watt per foot ratio that you're looking for. With HID, it's always been 50 watts per foot. That's industry standard. With LED, you're looking usually at about half of that and what we recommend is 30 watts to 35 watts per foot for LEDs. So that's a key indicator is watts per foot. HID, you're looking at 50. With LED, you're going to be looking at around 30 to 35. The big thing you need to start with first is watts uh, per foot uh, to get the total wattage that you need for the space. So let's just use this example. We have a three foot by a three foot space and we need 30 plus watts per foot. So that's 270 watts. Let's round it up to 300 watts. So first you're going to be out there looking for a 300 or more watt LED to cover this space. And uh, every light is either going to not have a secondary optic or it's going to have a secondary optic. There's a myth in the industry or in this market that secondary optics reduce the light output. And the troubling thing is, is it's both true and false. It's true because any kind of material put over an LED reduces the total light output. That's true. But the difference is if you take a secondary optic like a TIR that we use in, and it's built for that LED, it actually is a compounded effect. It's a much, much higher effect to your plants over the space that you're actually covering. So if you're covering a three foot by three foot space and you normally, let's say you had no optic, okay, it's just the bare LED. The LED, if it was pointing at this space, is going to be putting out an angle like that. So you're going to lose all of this side light. It's, you know, you think it's being reflected. You think it's going to the walls. It's really not doing your plants any good. You need to get the light from this LED straight to the plant canopy and the shortest distance possible. If you try to go over here and reflect back to the plants, you're going to lose a huge amount of light right there in that reflection. And the distance traveled, just traveling that distance is going to lose light. So this is wasted light for the most part. And just like a, a fire hose or a, a garden nozzle, if you add a secondary optic, okay, now what you're doing is just like turning that nozzle, you're focusing that energy through that LED to apply to exactly the canopy space that you want in the shortest distance to your plants. So what you might end up with a, a total light output of say 
uh, 100 units. When you add the secondary optic, yes, you are going to about 90 units. But in here, if you have no optic, you might have 400 par. By adding the secondary optic, you could go to 600 plus par. Easily doubling sometimes, easily doubling the uh, par output inside of this canopy space. So that's, that's the way to look at optics. You want to really look for a secondary optic of 90 degrees. Be careful of 60 degree or less. Um, some companies will take a 1 watt LED and they'll put like a 45 degree optic on there, really focused. But that, the problem is that's like that. So what you end up with is this is 300 watts being driven through this 45 or a 60. And the problem is you end up with a core coverage that's so tight and small that you're not actually efficiently covering the entire space. So 90 is perfect because at 90 degrees, if you're a foot and a half or two feet away from the plant, then that means you're getting a four foot coverage. If you're a foot and a half away, you're getting a three foot coverage. It's, it's double. The distance is double for the coverage with a 90 degree optic. So it's a, it's a perfect blend. So at advanced, that's, that's exactly why. We use a secondary optic. We've tested dozens and dozens of secondary optics. They're not all the same. We've split tested like crazy to get the exact TIR optic that will give you a good even coverage across a 90 degree spread. And then with the XTE, we've even added a reflector around the outside of it to really focus all wasted energy because you don't want any of this. This is just wasted. And the lights that are out there in the market with no optic, you're basically spreading this light all along your, your walls and everything and not really focusing that energy directly towards your plant canopy. The other thing is you, you miss out on penetration. So if your plant canopy is three foot tall, because you're sending light in all directions, you're not sending it straight down into that plant canopy, you're losing your penetration as well. So that's coverage that kind of talks about optics as well, and um, that should help you to, uh, to pick the right light. Par per watt is a very key indicator that you guys need to, to pay attention to. A lot of companies will give you the par. Uh, the problem is that's center par. So if you take a light, any, any given light source, and you measure straight directly down underneath it, this is the center par. So they'll say, oh, I have 2,000 par, some crazy number um, at this center point. The problem is I could get, anyone could get this number to two or 3,000 par if they wanted to. You could put a 45 degree optic and have three or four or 500 watts just come straight down here and cover a one foot by one foot space and have crazy par numbers. What you need to look for is the total par per watt. And then you also ideally would want to look for it over, um, you know, a space. So if you have a 90 degree optic, you're going to cover this entire space. What we do to measure par per watt is we actually take data points from the center of, of actually a four by four grid, including the center. We total those, which we call mass par. Then we divide that by the running watts, not not what the light's called, not the name, not what it says on the, on the light. We actually run it from the wall. So we'll use the meter, the running watts, and we divide the total par by the running watts. And that gets us the par per watt. If you look at any of our data sheets, you can see the par per watt easily for any one of our lights. And then we also measure and test a lot of other lights. We're constantly testing all kinds of lights for you guys so you can see what the par per watt is. For example, an HPS is very low par per watt, maybe six or seven par per watt. That's because it's very inefficient. It produces a ton of infrared that you don't even know it's really producing. Um, it's, a, it's a strong light, but it's not very efficient. And that's why the par per watt's extremely low. The spectrum is absolutely critical. We test dozens and dozens of contenders against our lights to determine what the right spectrum is. Um, you first have to determine what type of plant you're growing. So if you have a vegetative cycle or a vegetative plant, you want mostly blue spectrum. Okay? You still want it to be somewhat full, but a bl the blue is the most important. If you're using flowering or fruiting, heavy flowering, fruiting plants, you want a lot of red and, and you need a lot of PAR. So that's the second thing people talk about is PAR. PAR is just simply a measure with a spectrometer of the total amount of radiation from 400 to 700 nanometers. Just keep in mind that in the green range, plants aren't going to absorb as efficiently. They will absorb it. It's just not as efficient. So you want to look for the blue and the red, and you want to look for the maximum amount of, of par per watt and par inside of that range. So let's talk about warranties and guarantees. Um, anytime you buy a piece of electronics, you want to make sure you get a great warranty. So at Advanced, 
what we've done is we offer you a three-year full warranty. And what that includes is if you have a driver go out, if you have any problems, we're going to handle not only parts, labor, but also shipping. So you're not going to be back and forth with parts, and you need to watch out for that. Make sure on any warranty you're looking at that you're fully covered. Um, let's talk about guarantees. We offer a 90-day money-back guarantee. So you get a light from us, you try it, you put it in your grow, you love it, you keep it. If you don't like it for any reason, you send it back, you get a full refund. Again, anytime you're looking at a guarantee, read the fine print. You gotta watch out for restocking fees. You gotta watch out for shipping back and forth. Some people might even want you to ship it back to China. So look for a guarantee that is not gonna ding you with all of these fees. And then and you should be set. You'll have a grow light that you can use. You won't have the risks of it. You'll have a, a good warranty to back you up. And if you follow these steps that we've outlined here, you should be able to get a tremendous light, last you a long time, save you a ton of money, and get really high quality production out of it.